Predictions about the decline of Christianity in America may be premature. The cross and the empty tomb, both Christian symbols, are bookends to the Easter story. This was on the front page of CNN on Resurrection Sunday. Bruce Lawn. This is an interesting topic that I saw on the front page of CNN. The demise of Christianity, which I know a lot of people would love, could be a premature prediction? This is on the front page of CNN, guys. I was shocked. Shocked to see CNN care so much about God. Check out what they said. Predictions about the decline of Christianity in America may be premature. The cross and the empty tomb, both Christian symbols, are bookends to the Easter story. This was on the front page of CNN on Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. One symbolizes the tragic execution of Jesus, while the other represents the Christian belief in his resurrection and the claim that death does not have the final word on him or his followers. As millions of Americans celebrate the holiest day in the Christian calendar on Sunday, most will hear variations of the Easter message finding new life in unforeseen places. But that message could also describe a surprising prediction about the future of Christianity in the U.S. For years, church leaders and commentators have warned that Christianity is dying in America. It's a claim, isn't it? That's what they would want you to know. What my man KB said, they said millennials are living God. My, they say millennials are leaving God. I smiled and told him you really should get to know the squad. Shout out to KB, man. That's the homie. All right. They say the American church is poised to follow the path of churches in Western Europe. Soaring Gothic cathedrals with empty pews, shuttered church buildings converted into skate parks and nightclubs and a secularized society where one theologian said Christianity as a norm is probably gone for good, or at least for the next hundred years. Wow. Yet, when CNN asked some of the nation's top religion scholars and historians recently about the future of Christianity in the U.S., they had a different message. You don't say. Rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> That's a fact. Oh, man. They said the American church is poised to find new life for one major reason. Waves of Christians are migrating to the U.S. And they said the biggest challenge to Christianity's future in America is not declining numbers, but the church's ability to adapt to this migration. Interesting. So the people that are coming here are coming here from predominantly Christian countries, countries where there's more Christians. Fascinating point. A historian and assistant professor of religion at Wesleyan University in Connecticut says people have been predicting the extension of Christianity in the U.S. for over two centuries, and it hasn't happened yet. Hmm, I wonder why. He pointed to Thomas Jefferson, one of the nation's founding fathers, who predicted in the 1820s that Christianity would be replaced in the U.S. by a more enlightened form of religion that rejected Jesus' divinity and belief in miracles. Good old Thomas Jefferson. What an L that was, huh? Instead, Jefferson's prophecy was followed by a series of revivals. <gasps> Sound familiar? Including the Great Awake the Second Great Awakening, which swept across America and reasserted Christianity as the dominant force in American life. I'd never bet against American Christianity, particularly evangelicalism, Slaughter said, and its ability to adapt and remain a significant shaper of the American society. What's happening in Europe is the church's nightmare scenario. So it goes on to say how you know things are bad in Europe and how 64% of Americans um, used to call themselves Christians today. That sounds like a lot, but 50 years ago it was 90, yada, yada, yada. And so I would push back and just say, well, what do you mean by Christian? And are we talking about devoted Christians, people that attend church? Are we regularly plugged into community? Or are we just talking about people that kind of culturally identify as Christians? You go to the Bible Belt, you go to the Midwest, a lot of people culturally identify as Christians. How many of them are plugged into churches? How many of them are reading their Bible? How many of them are giving? How many of them are practicing their faith? Hey, you may not know I make music, but I have a brand new song that just came out. Here's a quick preview. In the moment, I gotta overcompensate. I build a tabernacle. That's why the world is rubbernecking. Eve one in the Adam's apple. Whoa there. Why you wanna go there? Time to shut the door, cause we letting out all the cold air. <laughs> Yo, 
Double R back, baby. It's not for Rolls Royce. It's for Rap Ruslan. Let's get it. So hit the link in the description or go to ruslantothemoon.com to stream now. I'll see you over there. Why you want to go there? Living for the approval. The man will get you nowhere. I don't know how much those numbers have declined, but I think it's a bit premature to try to say Christianity is on its way out. Now, I, I think whenever there's darkness, a little bit of light shines brighter. And I think whenever there's a time where people are confused, those are huge opportunities for us. Huge opportunities for us to contextualize the gospel, huge opportunities for us to be the hands and feet of Jesus on this side of eternity, which I think we need to do more of. And I see the potential of revival. I see the potential of maybe not more Sunday morning services being full, but seeing more people who are devoted to their faith and practicing it consistent, consistently and regularly. I could see that. I don't know what that means, though, in terms of are we going to have the coolest, most booming church services? You, you understand what I mean? And so I think there's you know pros and cons. I do believe from just sheer numbers and analytics that people are hearing about Jesus more than ever because of the internet which I think is amazing. Because of the internet, it's way more people engaging in content about Jesus and hearing about him. Can that usher in a revival that's felt on a transformative sense? Well, that would be my hope. Hey, you wanna see something crazy? Over 51% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed. And the ones that are subscribed, only 10% have their bell notification on. So do me a favor, please hit that subscribe button, turn the bell notification on so you don't miss anything we have going here. All right? I appreciate you. My hope would be that this gospel would transform us from the inside out to the point where culture shifts, things that were once dead are alive again. People that were dismissed and discarded are transitioning to being stable contributors to society and to their families and to their local churches. That's a cultural change. And that change can, can be a smaller number with a greater impact. Think about this. If, I don't know, let's just say we touch a million unique users across our three channels. If a million people over the course of a couple years really grabbed hold of not just the theology, but the praxology of living our lives unto the glory of God, and you guys started implementing the things we talk about regularly, we started implementing things like taking care of your body, becoming financially literate. Why? So you could be more generous. Why? Because Jesus met physical needs as well as spiritual needs. If a million people that, that, that kind of stumbled across our channels over the course of five years, a million people over the course of five years started to implement these principles, principles in this Bible, because they were born again, because they, they had an encounter with the Holy Spirit and we were transformed and were born again, started implementing these things, just, just a million people, which is a very small percentage of the United States. That's less than 1%. If a million people all of a sudden, today, Let's just say they're age 18 to 23. In five years, they're ages 27 to 32. They're starting families there, right? And those million people were financially literate, biblically literate, healthy and fit, loving their spouses, crushing it in their careers, giving to their churches, giving to the different charities. I think the ripple effect of a million people could have a completely bottom-up cultural transformation. And I think the good news is it's actually going to be way more than a million people. I think it's way more than, I, I think it could be, I think across all the people that, that make content on this platform, everybody from Mike Winger to Alan Parr to John McRae to Tim Ross, I think it could be 10 million people. And, and 10 million people get activated and they hear something here that goes, I need to go plug into a local church. They get into a local church, then they study the Bible and they get accountability and they work on their trauma and they work on their issues. 10, 10, can you imagine 10 million people? 10 million people whose life is messy because they don't know they're up from their down, who are uh, struggling in different areas, who are dysfunctional. And then because they encounter Jesus and because they say, I'm going to live out the ways of God in my life because I want to be in the will of God, 
I find the ways of God and the word of God, and I'm going to take this seriously. If 10 million people globally started implementing that, and all of a sudden were more financially literate, biblically literate, spiritually compelling to their communities, culturally engaged, if 10 million people five years from now were on mission in that scenario, I think that could be incredible. Nathan said, literally impossible because of sin, even though we're saved, we sin. I, I didn't say people stop sinning. I said people just go from being dysfunctional to functional, right? If we got 10 million, 10 million men off of, let's just say we got 10 million men off of into their Bible, taking care of their bodies and being financially literate and in the local church. I don't think that's crazy, by the way. I don't think that's crazy. Does that mean those 10 million people aren't going to think women are still attractive and, and might take a second glance? But if 10, just think about that. If 10 million people, 10 million men got off of, got into their Bibles, got into local churches, figured out their career and their finances, took care of their health and fitness. If 10 million people, men, if 10 million men did that because of the overlap and the resources provided by this little niche on Christian YouTube, I think that would have worldwide impacts. I don't think that's that that that's negative. You think you you think you always got to be addicted to porn? You think you always got to stay not knowing how to manage your money and living paycheck to paycheck? You think you you can't get biblically literate on a Bible? You think you can't plug into a healthy church? You think you can't work through your dysfunction? Who lied to you? That would have major impact. Major worldwide impact. I think we're just scratching the surface. And by the way, I have no issues with putting the medicine in the candy. I got no issues with putting the medicine in the candy. So I think I think I think there could be massive revival, but I think it's 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 bottom up, not top down. I think it's bottom up. I think out of those 10 million people, some of them are going to go on to start businesses. Some of them are going to go into entertainment. Others are going to go into the private sector. Others are going to go into tech. Others are going to go into medicine. Others are going to go into government. Why? How are you different? Most Christians I know just get saved and they have their hell insurance. They don't serve in their communities. They don't become healthy and fit. They don't, right? What is different? What is different? How, you know, got plugged into this community and made this stuff just started clicking more and just things changed for me. I don't know. I, I started thinking about experiencing the kingdom of heaven on this side of eternity too. I don't know, man. I, th I think it's way more feasible and I think we're just, I think we're just starting to scratch the surface. I think we're just starting to scratch the surface. Hey, this clip is from our daily after party stream. If you enjoyed it, consider signing up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month where you get access to the replays of our daily after party streams, as well as the uncut extended versions of our podcast, Discord access that's private, and a discount code for our merch store. Only $5 a month. And ultimately, it's the best way to help us contextualize the gospel of Jesus using media, podcasting, and of course, YouTube. The link for that is in the description or in the pinned comment. The perks are amazing. You should get on there. It's only $5 a month. I'll see you over there. All right. Peace.